I know, I know, the review is late, I'm sorry, but anyways, welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 840. Today we're going to be talking about all the awesomeness, all the greatness that was this chapter. This really was an amazing chapter. Mind you, you may not notice how much I love it. You, you can't really see it, the excitement, because I'm really freaking tired right now. I'm like really tired. But, um, yeah, you can't really tell. But it was an amazing chapter. It's a really, really good chapter. So, uh, I figured we could start off by talking about who, who beat up Cassette. I leave her name in Cassette. Last chapter. The one that beat him up, beat her up with Niji. There was some speculation that Ariju did it, that Judge did it. There was some speculation for everybody did it, but it was... Niji who did it. Sanji does try to fight Niji, but the fight he like attack it's like a it's like Sanji kind of like attacks him, he block. Like he gets hit and like the fight kind of ends there. It doesn't really go anywhere. The majority of this chapter is flashback, if I'm going to be honest with you. But it's also a lot of expedition on the bin smokes. So what I really want to start with the you know, I already talk covered the whole who beat the girl thing. What I want to start with is the bin smokes are not born human. The bin smokes were manufactured. Apparently, Sanji and his siblings did not. Uh, the reason I'm confused is it, it's implied that they're created, but then Judge talked about Sanji having a mother. And I'm like. Maybe the mother was like a mother figure to them, or maybe it played the role of a mother until they re until they were old enough to understand that they were created differently than everybody else, that they weren't born from two people having sex. Maybe, like that. We I was confusing it. They were created scientifically, yet, yet, yet they have a mother. That really makes sense to me, but that's just me. But, um, no, there was a lot of scientific explanation. Like, Oda really tried to explain this. I'm not going to go over all the scientific parts of it. I'm really not, because honestly, it, I, I was like, I would, I, I, I reread the chapter once or twice. But to be completely honest, it all is kind of a little bit like, I would need to do research. Because I'm not really sure about some of the things they're talking about, like what they are. To be honest with you, I would need to like, do research into these fields, which I may do. I may do a video like trying to just explaining some of the stuff Jug was talking about, but at the moment I'm really not going to go into like how much sense any of this makes scientifically. But there, we did we get an explanation to how the Vince most are born, which is great, really, really good. Very happy with that. We also get something. Nothing odd. Nothing very odd, if you ask me. We get in the flashback with Sanji. We get to see him cooking for rats. I'm, I'm jumping around a lot, I know, but we get to see him cooking for rats. And re and he gets beat up by his parents, by his dad, not his parents, his dad. And he pretty much tells him what we've all heard before. You know, you're royalty, don't you ever cook food again. You t and especially never cook it for one of these fools, foolish, weak peasants that are beneath you. And then he gets beat up, like really beat up. But there's a scene with Riju, where he's laughing, like he, he like like laughing like a little girl, like really, a giggling, laughing at Sanji's misery. And there's a scene, a scene where Riju afterwards is like abandoning, is like putting bandages on him, and it's like fisting Sanji up. And he, and he apologizes and said, I'm sorry, but if I don't laugh along with them, I'll be bullied and treated this way too. So Riju is pretty much saving her own ass. To be blunt. She's saving her own ass, but she doesn't care about Sanji. And this pretty much there's already scenes. I may do a video. I'm, you know, 
probably next week. Yeah, next week I'll probably have a video out because I'm probably not gonna have time to record it until next weekend. But I'll do a whole video about all the reasons you can read you are probably a good person. But there's multiple. There have been multiple hints toward read you being a good person and just really good stuff. Really good stuff. And I really like read you as a character. See what I like about read you is that one, she her devil proof seems OP as fuck. I mean. She saved Luffy, whatever kind of poison, whatever poison Luffy, must have been pretty powerful poison. If it's affecting Luffy, right? Because Luffy's supposed to be immune to all poison. But then we get into this amazing character arc. It's amazing, not character arc, but it's an amazing idea that you can remove the poison by sucking on his mouth. She appears to have some kind of double fruit, like a moth fruit, or maybe a butterfly fruit or something. But yeah, I mean, uh, Reiju's awesome. And also, Reiju, she just seems like a really interesting character. Because she cares about her brother. It, most of the time in One Piece, the people you care about somebody, you like stand up for them and fight for them. What I like about Reiju is that she cares about Sanji, but she's handling this in a more realistic way. Like, a great example of this is Belmere and Nami Flashback. There was no reason not to just keep up with the lie that, you know, she could have hit Nami and Yoshiko, told, paid the money to Arlong, and they could have escaped to the island. They could have done that. They really could have done that if they wanted to. But she denied it because it wasn't realistic, but it, it was a great, a great scene, but it wasn't realistic. This is very realistic. Riju cares about Sanji. But she's not willing to sacrifice herself and her happiness for him. Which is more realistic than, let's say, her being like, her trying to stand up to her dad, who would no doubt beat the little, ever living shit out of her. I mean, it's more realistic, and I really like that. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the, a lot of the friendship and family scenes, they won't be, they're amazing. They make me cry. I love those moments. But this just feels more like, she seems like a character that is like, she cares about Sanji, but yet she's more realistically selfish, I guess you could say. But it's something that I really, really, really like. No, but, so there's a couple others, so we learned, you know, that this most are manufactured. Apparently they have, like, skeletons. It's like, they really elaborate on what they mean, but it's like, Exoskeleton, it's the kind of vibe I got from it. So maybe they're like on some Wolverine shit. Like, not that they'll have claws in their hands, but maybe that they can like have like a metal skin. Like, imagine if they have like a metal, if they can have, imagine if, well, Sanji doesn't. So because Sanji's a failure, of course, I would say it in this chapter. He's the only, he, out of all of his siblings, Sanji, but only one to be a normal human being. Yeah, he's the only one to be normal, which is interesting. I'm not sure what's different between Sanji and everybody else, but apparently, Reach, apparently all of them, including Reach, I it wasn't directly stated, but I think it's safe to assume even Reju at a young age was as strong, were as strong as an adult male. The Reju was as strong as an adult male, as a kid. I think. I, I would assume if her brothers were, I would assume she was as well. They did some kind of genetic modification. So gender kind of irrelevant here. It's obviously a gen it's genetic modification. But there's, there's some reason Sanji's the only bin smoke that is considered a failure. And I would assume in judge's eyes, that means nothing is stronger than adult male. So Riju is probably stronger than adult male. So is Niji and. Ichiji and Nichi, they're all strong in adult males, not Sanji just as strong as, nor as a normal kid. He's a normal human being. I found that pretty interesting because I was trying to think of why. What is different about it? Is it the, is it the way his mind works? But, um, yeah. So that happened. That was very, very, very interesting. I mean, they're definitely very powerful. But... What I want to talk about now is, of course, 
the, the, the big, the big thing. Donnie Dad worked with Vagabunk. Yeah, um, that is a thing that happened. So apparently Donnie Dad was one of the scientists that worked with Vagabunk. Before, I guess, the world government, you know, the world government deems the, re the research they were doing too dangerous and, like, went to capture them. And I guess Vagapunk uh, was, like, allied himself with them or something. But I got the volume. I get what I, from what I understood, Vagapunk and Jug were working together on, like, genetic modification and cloning. And I guess the world government was, like, okay, you, like, created, like, you guys are, like, creating life. Like, no, that's too far. Like, even the world government was, like, no, no, no. Realize just how how stupid it is to attempt to create life. So yeah, the world government shut them down, and I guess Vagapunk allied himself with them, but just did escape and continued to research on Germa. And I guess the plan is to make an army of incredibly powerful people, super soldiers, if you will. That's practically what they did. He judged pretty much pretty much. He's obviously not saying it, probably because otherwise people would say it's a ripoff, but Judge is pretty much creating an army of super soldiers. It's like a ripoff from the plot of a Marvel movie. A Marvel movie. Oh wait, it is. It sounds a lot like some, something from Marvel. Like the Civil War movie. Like the army of, of uh, Winter Soldiers. Yeah. Think about it. But that's pretty much what Judge is doing. He wants to like conquer the world with his children and all the other clones. But it can take, I think it can take like, I, I forgot exactly, but it can take a very long time to grow a 20 year old person. Like a 20 year old male can take years to grow. I'm assuming it's the same for a female. But that was interesting. That was very interesting. With all this, like, genetic modification, you know, they're interesting. I also like it. They we're getting more mentions of Vagapunk, meaning we're probably going to be seeing him soon. And seeing Vagapunk is always great, right? But at the end of the chapter, it's a little bit after Sanji gets beaten up and Ryu helps him out. Judge announces to the kingdom that Sanji had disappeared. Yeah, that's weird. But yet, then you see him in a cage. With like this thing wrapped around his head crying for his father's help. The thing here is that they announced it and the way the other... And, but the Vinsmoke, when they were alone, they acted like Sanji had been gone. Part of me thinks Judd may be the only one who knows. What really happened to Sanji? The others seem like they generally don't know how he disappeared. Like, they're all like, you just up and disappeared. It's like... Did Judge kidnap his own son and put him in like a cage somewhere without his family knowing? I mean, I would assume. Not that any of his siblings would give a shit. Maybe I'm missing something from the chapter, but that was... That thing was odd, because they talk to him like, disappear really, or going away, or being dead, or they make this, like, announcement to the people of Gurma, but then we see that he's perfectly fine, and they know where he is. So I guess they just made it up, this, this thing about him disappearing, and then he actually did disappear for real. I guess. So, uh, and as to how he's going to escape, and get away from this, it probably read you. He pro I would not be surprised if read you helped, uh, Sanji. Sanji escape. So yeah, sorry about that, but Riju will most likely be the reason Sanji escape than just this chapter it wasn't an information dump. It was just a lot happened. We got all we got all this and we got a ton of information dumped on us about Gurma, but of how the Vince most are being are like manufactured human beings, how Judge King is like creating life, how he's a scientist that worked alongside of Vagapunk. Read you is most likely a good person. We got a lot of Sanji backstory. We got the first reference of Sanji's mother, who was implied in this chapter to be a cook. Just like Sanji, which is, um, the judge said something like, 
There's no reason to do things like this anymore. Your mother has passed or something like that. Paraphrasing here, but that was very interesting. It's a really good chapter, honestly, a 10 out of 10. I have no problem with it. It had the past two chapters. It's ironic because a couple, like three, four weeks ago, I made a video. Does the year of Sanji have enough Sanji? And look at us now. We're just, it's like Sanji chapter, Sanji chapter, Sanji chapter. Very, very happy with this. So, yeah, uh, if I had to rate the chapter, I would grade it up. Uh, 10 out, yeah, 10 out of 10. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. And if you, it, if you liked the video, leave it a like, subscribe for more videos. And above all else, have a great day. I'm sorry this was so long. I just had a lot to talk about.